Hello, my name is Amy Sturkey. I am a pediatric physical therapist, and I've been running a video series with Sebastian, a young man with uh, spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy. And I got a question this week that I thought was a really important question. It was a question of what is cerebral palsy? So just simply, cerebral palsy is a condition that results when there's been damage done to the brain that affects the, the way you move and that damage happens a little before you're born, while you're being born, or shortly after you're born. It's a lifelong condition. It can get better or worse over time, um, but there is no cure at this point. Now, I believe in my children that I'm treating right now, in their lifetime, there will be a cure, but there's not a cure right now. So cerebral palsy affects the way you move, and it does this by affecting the stiffness of your muscles. So think about when you're really nervous about something and your muscles get all tight and tense. Well, that's nothing compared to the children who have the spastic type of cerebral palsy. Their muscles get very tight. Think about the way when you're in the bathtub and you're just like really relaxed. Well, that's your, your muscles are not as stiff. Now, some children with cerebral palsy have hypotonia, so their muscles are not as stiff and again, there is no comparison between what you are in the bathtub and what they feel. Their muscles are really relaxed, really low stiffness, too low. So it makes it hard for them to move. Some of them, others have fluctuating stiffness, and that makes it hard for them to find a stable point to work off of. In any case, that muscle stiffness problem, whether it's too high or too low or too fluctuating, it affects your, the child's posture, their balance, their strength, or their coordination. So children with cerebral palsy, according to where the damage is in their brain, they can have learning deficits, they can have hearing difficulties. They, I mean, the muscles that move your body are the same muscles that move your mouth. So they can have trouble with speech and they can have trouble with their vision because again, the muscles that move your body, those same muscles move your eyes. So uh, they can have difficulty seeing. And according to where the damage is in the brain, it can be not only the muscles of the eyes, but the part of the brain that actually interprets the visual information that comes from the brain. So these children can have a lot of different uh, features or conditions that go along with just the difficulties moving. So how common is cerebral palsy? Well, about one baby is born in the United States with cerebral palsy every hour. It's about one in every 323 babies have cerebral palsy, and there are 17 million people with cerebral palsy in, worldwide. So you might wanna know what causes cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is not something you can catch. It's not contagious. It happens because of damage that's done, sort of like when you fall and get hurt, you get a bruise, or well, you get damage that's done to your brain around the time you're born. And this is caused by, well, you're more likely to get it if you were born early, less than 37 weeks gestation, and your chances of cerebral palsy increase. If there are more than one child being born, so children who are twins are more likely to have cerebral palsy, triple, triplets are more likely to have it. The more children there are in a birth, the more likely that somebody's gonna have cerebral palsy. If there is a loss of oxygen during the pregnancy, then that baby has more of a chance of having cerebral palsy because of a lack of an oxygen to the brain can cause damage to the brain. So the research indicates that there are more boys than girls that get cerebral palsy. And they think that boys just are a little bit more fragile when they're first born, so it's more likely they will have uh, cerebral palsy than a girl. So how do you know if you have a child with cerebral palsy or not? Well, certainly the more significantly the involvement, the more likely that you're gonna know something is not going right with your child's development earlier. But usually by 12 to 18 months, there is a diagnosis if one's gonna happen. About 40% of children have cerebral palsy so that one half of their body is involved, the right side or the left side. About 25% have seizures or epilepsy. 50% have intellectual in involvement, 33% are unable to walk, 20% are unable to talk, 25% have behavioral difficulties, 20% are require a G-tube so they can't eat well enough to be able to sustain themselves so they have to have food in through a tube in their stomach to go directly to their stomach so that they can eat. 
about 33% have hip displacement or their hips aren't formed correctly. So um, something has to be done to de deal with that. And about 20% have sleep problems. So this is just the basics of cerebral palsy. I hope this is really helpful. Um, I will say that I did do a book, um, C is for Cerebral Palsy. Um, it's geared toward children five, six, seven years of age to help learn just the basics of cerebral palsy. Um, I'll be glad to put a link to this in the description. But I do think that knowledge of cerebral palsy is just really important to prevent fear and to encourage good treatment of people with cerebral palsy. Um, I think that people are afraid of things that they don't understand. So I hope this was helpful and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.